Hello everyone and welcome to today's podcast, The Doc is In. My name is Dr. Muhammad Khalil from the Hospital Medicine Department here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Joining me today are two of my dear colleagues, Dr. Fernanda Bonilla from the Infectious Disease Department and Dr. Govinda Bodhi from the Pulmonary Medicine Department. Thank you so much for being here today. Happy to be here. All right, so today we're going to discuss a very important matter, which is the vaping among the young youth. And uh, for the past few years, we have noticed a significant increase in, use, uh, in using vapes, basically, uh, in schools and the community. So the question comes, how can we fight this back? So I will start with you, Dr. Bodhi. From pulmonary perspective, um, how does vaping affect the lung? And how, what are the immediate and long-term complications of vaping? Thank you, Dr. Khalil. Uh, vaping can affect lung in many ways. Uh, vaping has, uh, the, as the electronic cigarettes, what we call as, have a lot of substances, including nicotine. Mm -hmm. And we are learning more and more about the constituents of the vape. And there are a lot of chemicals, gases, and metals, which can be very harmful to the young uh, individual. Mm -hmm. The lungs are developing and the effect of these substances on the developing lungs can be immense. And the symptoms, what we notice, is usually cough, shortness of breath, wheezing, chest tightness, and also we notice that the youth, when they are trying to do their regular activities and also the sports activities, they start uh, finding it difficult to cope up because of their loss of lung function. So these are all the early side effects or the effects of vaping. Mm -hmm. But we also are worried about the long-term consequences because as we are learning more and more about vaping for the past 20 years, we are learning that they can have long-term chronic uh, effects, especially leading to bronchial asthma, chronic bronchitis, and also they can do some permanent scarring of the lungs. Mm. And that can have an effect on the lung function. And we also have noticed that in 2019, there's a sort of an epidemic of a very serious lung disease called EVALI. Yeah. The acronym EVALI is for electronic cigarettes and vaping related products associated lung injury, mm -hmm. where even we have seen young healthy individuals getting serious respiratory failure and leading to ICU admissions and deaths. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is noted for some particular chemicals, including tetrahydrocannabinol and also uh, vitamin A acetate, mm. which most of the vape uh, substances uh, have been removed now, mm. but still we can note on that this can have devastating effects on the lung. Mm. And not only that, this lung effect can also impact the other vital organs, especially the brain and heart. So vaping is not as uh, harmless as it looks. Right. It can have devastating consequences. Right. Thank you so much. That was very informative. Uh, definitely, uh, it's not a safer uh, alternative to cigarettes. Vaping can be even more devastating to the lungs. All right, now let's turn to you, Dr. Bonilla. Uh, could you help the audience understand uh, how does vaping affect the immune system? And uh, how does, uh, does it also affect the disease transmission among the youth, especially in schools? That's a great question, Dr. Khalil, because vaping does not only affect the lungs and the heart, but also the immune system by damaging the respiratory tract and the immune defense system there. Mm -hmm. Nicotine and the chemicals in the vaping liquid are irritants to the airway, and they affect the body's capacity to fight infection by affecting the different layers of protection that we have in our respiratory tract, mm -hmm. such as the epithelium, which is the lining of the airway, the cilia, which are those tiny hairs that sweep out dangerous particles, the neutrophils and macrophages, which are immune cells that gobble up germs, and other proteins that uh, help fight off viruses. As a result of this, germs have an easier way to go inside the epithelium, that lining in the lungs, and cause inflammation and infection. Mm -hmm. Vaping also changes the environment in the mouth, and yeast and gum infections are more common in people that vape. Right, so they end up with dental caries or two, right? So they are w damaging their teeth, basically, as well, right? Correct. Yeah. 
In general, there is more stress and inflammation, not only in the lungs, but throughout the body. Mm -hmm. And people that vape will be more prone to have infections with viruses, such as influenza, the flu, COVID-19, or bacteria like streptococcus and staphylococcus. Mm -hmm. These infections tend to be more severe and the healing process is slower. And especially that the young population, they do have a, a let's say, an immature immune system, right? So they're still developing. Still developing. Correct. So they probably will end up with more, uh, they'll be more prone for infections. Another issue is the social aspect of vaping. Teens tend to share the mm -hmm. vaping devices, and by doing that, they are also spreading germs, right. viruses, and bacteria. Yeah. This can become a public health concern yeah. in schools. Definitely, yeah. So vaping does not only carry an individual risk, but community-level consequences. Thank you, Dr. Bonilla. That was very informative. Uh, going back to you, Dr. Bodhi, um, I'm sure uh, the audience, uh, the parents, the teachers, the healthcare providers have this question. What support can we provide as, as healthcare professionals and if there are any uh, treatment available for uh, teens who already vape? Because, um, you know, they, uh, it, is a, it is addicting, right? So uh, yes. is there any support system that we can provide for them? That's a very relevant question, Dr. Khalil. Uh, fortunately, we have. Mm -hmm. So we have some interventions which can help them to cope up and come out of the uh, addiction. Mm -hmm. But for that, the first and foremost is the support we need to give them. Right. They need education, counseling, and behavioral therapies. For that, of course, uh, the school, the parents play a major role. Of course, the healthcare providers as well. Yes. So what is very important is to detect the early uh, impact on the lung, especially or the other organs by uh, evaluating them for any damage. For example, lung function tests, do imaging to see if there's any damage to the lungs. Mm. Or like Fernanda said, look for any early infections. Mm. So all these can uh, be assessed. And then, fortunately, we have interventions uh, which are being uh, proven to be of benefit for even for vaping, even for the young individuals. Mm. Adolescents need expert supervision for this uh, treatment uh, strategies. They can't just start on their own. So they need a proper healthcare provider who can be well-versed with the treatment options. So we have nicotine replacement therapies, which are the mainstay for that. So nicotine patches, nicotine gums, nicotine uh, lozenges, all these help a lot. And they have been proven to be efficacious. Mm. Uh, the other uh, therapies are not for the youngsters. So we focus more on the nicotine replacement therapy. And of course, in Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi, we do have this support system. We do here, have, right? we do have. Excellent. And if, uh, what is more important for me, uh, from the point of view for the patient, is the support. Mm. The parents need to give a lot of support, the family members, and not, not only the uh, uh, school and parents, it's also the peers. Right. If we see a, a colleague or a friend who had quit vaping, that helps this child. So he's going to get an example from that. Yes. So that really helps. But we also need to remember that a lot of them do relapse. So when they relapse, the constant support and follow-up is important from all of us, both the healthcare providers and the parents and the school, mm -hmm. because we don't allow them to lose hope again. Ultimately, they need to quit, and we need to help for that. Right. But, so uh, that, that's actually very informative, and I uh, second what you said, that it's not only an individual uh, effort. It has to be a, a teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Yes. So it is the whole community that needs to work together. The uh, family starts with the family and the parents, uh, the schools and teachers, of course, and the healthcare providers. And together, I truly believe that uh, if we do this as a teamwork, that we can make a big difference in the life of the the, uh, the youth. Yes. True. All right. So before we finish today. Um, Dr. Bonilla and Dr. Bodhi, any word of advice you have for our young audience? My advice is simple. Vaping may feel like a safer alternative than smoking, but it is not. Vaping is not less harmful than smoking cigarettes. To the teens, your health is precious, and the choices that you make now may have lifelong consequences on your health. If you vape, you are likely to become addicted, to harm your lungs, your heart, 
your developing brain, your developing immune system to affect your sleep and even your mental health. If you vape and you are trying to quit and you are struggling, it can happen because nicotine is very addictive. Get help, talk to a trusted adult and let us know because we have many tools that can help you and we really want to. To parents and families, talk openly with your kids about the risks that we have learned about today. Set clear expectations and give good example. Please note that many e-cigarette companies advertise very aggressively directly to teens by selling very appealing products with nice flavors. Peer pressure can lead some teens to try vaping, so be vigilant and open to talk about it. That's a very powerful message, Dr. Bonilla. Thank you. Dr. Bodhi? Do you have a message for our audience? Quitting vaping is not easy, but it's one of the best things you can do for your health. Thank you, Dr. Bodhi. Before we finish, I'd like to address the youth and the uh, teenagers. Vaping does not make you cool. Don't fall for it. Don't uh, fall for the peer pressure of your friends. Talk to your parents. And for parents, please be vigilant and talk to your kids about the danger of vaping. Thank you so much for being with us today. And we hope to see you on our next podcast. Assalamu alaikum.